Welcome to uh, Intavor Institute's Introduction to Project Risk Analysis. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at, uh, start looking at setting up our risk register, and we're going to show you how, quickly show you how we can define our risk categories. And uh, risk categories are very important uh, in your risk register because they define uh, the different types of parameters that you're going to be looking at uh, during your analysis. Uh, especially if you're on uh, doing qualitative and you're looking at non-schedule, non-cost risk, they could be safety, quality, performance, technology, uh, legal, and you want to be able to track those and apply impacts to those categories. So you need to make sure that you set up the, the, your risk categories properly. So in Risky Project, to set up our risk categories, we go to the Risk tab and then go to the risk categories in the settings groups. And this shows us all of our risk categories. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that out of the box, we have uh, six non-schedule, non-cost um, risk categories that come out. Now, the ones we can see here, schedule and scope and cost and income, those are actually part of the Monte Carlo simulations. We need those to run the, the uh, Monte Carlo simulations against cost and against schedule. So they cannot be removed. We can't really modify them. Um, and so we'll just, we'll just collapse those. But we can see that we have safety, environment, quality, legal, performance, technology. Now, if we don't want... Um, one of the things we recommend, if we don't, if we're not going to be tracking a particular risk category as part of our projects, um, we can just get rid of them, and that's simply by selecting that category and deleting, or we can just press our delete key on our keyboard. Now, typically. Uh, there may be, you may, uh, the out of the box, you could say we want to uh, modify the name. I'm just going to start calling this perform, put this back in as performance. And under performance, we'll have uh, performance risk. And there I've modified an existing category to rename it. Now, one of the things you may want to, after we deleted, you may want to uh, add add one. Or one of the things you can see is, actually, what we have is we have a, a risk category and a risk outcome. And this is the impact. So under performance, we could actually have multiple uh, impacts under there. We could have a low, high, or we might want to characterize it in a, a couple different ways. Uh, but when we when we roll up the impacts in the analysis, it will all be rolled up under performance. And this is really uh, an artifact of how the risk assignment is done. If you've looked at some of the previous uh, videos, uh, we use outcomes, which is a risk category. When you say outcome, what what risk category uh, is the uh, risk going to be assigned to? And then it's the outcome type. And again, if so, if we look at, if we go back up and look at sch schedule and scope, so we have the, this is a schedule or scope outcome, and it could be a relative delay or fixed delay. So these are all sorts of different types of outcome types. Now, if we wanted to add a risk category, we'll put quality back in. So first of all, we're going to add the the category, and I'm just going to indent it, and that turns that now into a category. And then I'm going to say quality risk, and then I'm going to out out there that. And now we've created a risk category and the outcome. So that's quickly how we can modify uh, our. our risk register. So we have 
We can have only the, uh, the uh, risk categories that we want in the system. And we, as I mentioned earlier, we always want to ensure that we uh, add the categories we want and actually remove the categories that we don't want because we don't want to have an additional parameter, a risk category in our risk register when we're not tracking that as part of our uh, project management processes. So I hope that helps you in setting up your risk categories. Uh, in our next video, we'll take a look at setting up our uh, default risk properties.